And then finally, psychotherapy, either formally with a therapist, or even the kind of meaningful discussion that you can have with someone else who's helpful, with, with a friend, with someone else who shares your situation, to help you realistically assess the situation, what is it that has been lost, give people a chance to vent, to grieve what has been lost, and then to reassess you know, where you go from there, does that uh, imply that you should be reassessing things about your life in terms of where you put your, your energy and so on. This is a uh, Chinese symbol that apparently means <laughs> crisis. And it's a combination of two symbols. One means danger, and the other one means opportunity. One, someone experiences a depression or a difficult life circumstance. There's both a danger for you know, developing a depression, not feeling good, but also an opportunity to take time to reassess where one is investing energy, importance, and make changes. That's how people grow, it is through adversity. The problem with recreational drug, the reason why they're recreational <laughs> is because, of course, they induce well-being. And if they induce well-being, it's because they're acting in the brain on systems that you already have. So um, a lot of these uh, substances act through the serotonin pathway, the dopamine pathway, for example, uh, cocaine stimulants tend to um, act through the dopamine pathway. And um, at a certain point, these pathways can be um, modified in, in very long-lasting ways. Again, in some people, it may lead to problems. Some others are not going to develop as many problems. But for example, in, for that one use of cocaine, they could still find uh, the trace two years later in the brain function. So um, recreational drugs are recreational because they, they work on the systems that, that we have. The, the comment was a lot of people who have uh, with HIV have difficulty with appetite and they smoke and they find that it helps the appetite but then it could have a negative impact on the mood. I mean, I think it's, you know, when you're assessing all the factors that could have led to the development of depression, chronic alcohol, uh, heavy alcohol use for sure, and it's very, in terms of response to treatment, um, it's very difficult to treat a depression in someone who's still heavily using alcohol. A little bit of alcohol, you know, can still, usually treatment can work, but when people cross a certain line, and again, that line will vary according to people, but you can give whatever medication you want, it's just not touching, it's, it's not working. Uh, in fact, alcohol is, is a depressant. So the message I want to leave you with and, and that I hope you would be able to communicate to someone who experiences depression is that the fact that they develop the depression has very little to do with them in terms of their you know, feeling responsible mm -hmm. or feeling um, uh, inferior because of that. Now that the depression has developed, it's important to be proactive in addressing it through discussing it with the physician, through, if possible, doing some psychological work to see if one's life can, in fact, be improved through that crisis. And that if you know someone who is depressed, that you could encourage them to, in fact, seek treatment. People are very sensitive to the way they are being talked to. I remember just on Monday I was seeing a woman who saw me for depression and we discussed everything and she had the prescription and she was still hesitant about starting the medication and she said she went to a, a support group, she went to Kazam and someone said, you know, you have a depression, this is going to be good for your mood. I know someone else who you know, took the, the, the medication is feeling better and 
this is the kind of message that will help people not feel as guilty about being depressed and will help them move to action so that they could get over this uh, depression. Great. And thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure to be here. So I hope that uh, you're going to leave with a better understanding of why some people get depressed and some don't. And you're going to help. Each one of you is going to help two, three people who hopefully is going to help two, three people. And, and perhaps, as you know, someone was saying, we all grew up with that stigma that somehow brain disorders or mental disorders are a different category. <coughs> Hopefully, there's a, the next generation is not going to grow up with the, with the, the same uh, stigma. So thank you for uh, your attention. It's been a pleasure to be here. Right. And, uh,